I have always been a fan of Lumix cameras. I started shooting Lumix on the Lumix G7. I had a GH4, I had a GH5. I've always loved everything that Lumix is doing, but of course, and obviously, like many of us, I've always been disappointed by the fact that they do not have usable autofocus. And so, out of necessity, about a year ago, I switched to Sony. I now shoot on an a7 IV and an FX30. So when Lumix reached out to me in the summer to test a pre-production model of a Lumix S5 with phase detect autofocus, I was very intrigued. Fast forward to today and a trip to Japan for the launch of the Lumix S5 Mark II, we now have the camera I think a lot of people have been waiting for. So quick disclaimer, I do have a relationship with Lumix. I had a pre-production model of this camera to try and test the autofocus to make it as good and as great as it can be for the final release. And on top of that, I was also flown to Japan for the launch of the S5 Mark II, and I got to test the camera out there in Japan. And as well, I do have a loaner camera that I'm using right now, as well as all of the S Primes and a 7200 lens. So a bunch of lenses and the camera were given to me to test all of this out. So that is my disclaimer, I'm not being paid. If I don't like this camera, I'm gonna flat out tell you I don't like it. I'm not trying to burn bridges, but at the same time, if this thing sucks, I gotta tell you it sucks. So with that out of the way, look, I don't wanna fluff this and add a whole bunch of crap to this video because we could easily re-review a Lumix S5 because that's essentially what this is. This is just the Lumix S5 now with a full-size HDMI port and phase detect autofocus. Those are the two things you really need to think about with this camera. There are some other stuff, like we now have a fan, which allows for unlimited record time, which was a pain on the original Lumix S5 with that 30 minute limit in 10 bit, that is gone. But for all intents and purposes, you can go back and watch every Lumix S5 review I did or other people did, and you will have the bare bones of what this camera is capable of. Now just tack on that full-size HDMI port and the star of the show, phase detect autofocus. So first let's talk about the autofocus. That's obviously the first thing everybody's thinking about. And look, here's my take on it. If you are a content creator, you make YouTube videos, you do stuff for social media, all that kind of stuff, you're not doing super critical client work. I think the autofocus is great. But if you are doing documentary work, commercial work, where you do rely on autofocus for your running gun jobs or your documentary, all that kind of stuff, where you're actually using autofocus for work, I don't think this is quite there just yet. Now, if you're coming from any other Lumix camera, whether it's the original S5 or a GH6, a GH5, S1, S1H, any other Lumix camera, this is a monumental leap forward in autofocus. It actually works. I can move towards the lens, I can move away from the lens and I stay in focus. And I will say the best thing about this camera so far in my experience with Lumix is they listen. So I'm confident in saying that the more people get their hands on this camera and start using it and sharing what's good and what's bad with this system, I think it's just gonna keep getting better and better. I'm just being honest and transparent right now that I think as a critical autofocus system that you need to work reliably, I don't think it's on par with what I'm used to with my Sony cameras. So I'm using an a7 IV and an FX30, and I have some side-by-sides where you can just see that it's a little bit sluggish. It's not always the most tactile and reliable. It doesn't like to snap to things or stick to things as well as Sony, but it is more than usable for probably 90 to 95% of applications. Your tolerance may vary from mine. So I would say test it yourself or watch a whole bunch of more test videos to see if it's something that's worth it for you. My two cents is I would wait a little bit or get your hands on one, try it out, share your feedback, and hopefully with firmware updates, this thing will just keep getting better and better. Now, like I said, I don't wanna rehash an S5 review, so I'll spark note some of the top level things that I think make this camera so great. IBIS, the internal image stabilization on Lumix cameras has always been stellar and the S5 is a glowing example of how great that is. I really love that you can hand bomb and run around with this camera and things are just rock steady. 6K open gate internally, you're gonna get the full sensor here in 6K internally to an SD card. I love shooting open gate with this camera because it allows you to do a 916 extraction for social media or 16.9 if you need it. You're just gonna get that vertical height out of your frame that is so awesome for social media stuff. If you do TikToks or Reels, 
anything vertical, open gate is stellar. Shutter angle, if you're someone that switches frame rates often, you're going 30, 24, or 60, having shutter angle means you don't have to change your shutter speed each time. You can just leave this thing at 180 and you're golden and good to go. I love having shutter angle on this camera and that is something I have seriously, seriously missed using Sony, so it's really nice to have it back on this S5 Mark II. Anamorphic, the S5 and pretty much every Lumix camera has always been a great option for people that like to shoot anamorphic. Moment let me use their new anamorphic adapter while I was in Japan and I was able to get some really stellar images, but the best part is this thing de-squeezes internally. So many other cameras just can't figure out anamorphic. Lumix has always been a leader in this area. And of course the S5 Mark II is no exception. Frame rates and codecs. This thing is crazy when it comes to the various combinations of frame rates and codecs. You need an Excel document to try and figure all this out. If it's not in this camera, I really don't know what camera is for you because this thing basically does everything. I would say the one thing that I'm a little bit disappointed by is that we still have cropped 4K60. I really want all these cameras that are coming out now to have full frame 4K60, so it's a little bit disappointing that this one is still cropped, but it is what it is. You still get cinema 4K, you're gonna get 48 frames per second options, you're gonna get 4.3 options, APS-C crop modes, you're gonna get 6K full frame internally, you can shoot RAW out of this to an HDMI. The thing is endless when it comes to frame rates and codecs. Like I said, if this camera doesn't do it, I don't know what camera you should buy because this thing basically does everything. And when it comes to image quality, I've always preferred V-Log to pretty much any other log profile that I've used. I've gotten pretty used to shooting with S-Log3, but I still think V-Log has that cinema look to it. I think the highlights roll off nice and soft. And this is totally subjective and a personal taste thing. I just really like the way Lumix images look straight out of camera. But I will say having shot Sony for the last year or so, I've gotten stellar things with those cameras as well. It's just a total personal subjective taste thing. I think Lumix Vlog looks really, really nice. So that's all the good stuff. So here's my take overall with this camera. And I don't want to sound like a downer because I'm actually very, very excited about this camera. And I'm even more excited about the future of Lumix now that we have this phase attack system in here. But there's part of me that wonders what a Mark II would have looked like if we had phase detect in the original S5, because I kind of feel like this isn't really a Mark II, it's just an S model. It's not really that much of an upgrade over an S5 aside from the phase detect autofocus. Sure, it's nice that we have the fan system, it's not gonna overheat, not that the S5 ever overheated either, but it's nice that we get no recording limits, it's great they have a full-size HDMI, all of that is cool but there really isn't any other upgrade over the S5. I've been using the FX30 a lot right now, and you know, even though it's Super 35, it just feels like a great dedicated video camera. It has all the bells and whistles and mounting points, and the body is perfect for me as a little mini cinema camera, whereas this S5 Mark II still just feels like another hybrid camera. It's great that it has autofocus and all those bells and whistles we talked about, but you know, where's the 4K uncropped 60? These are things that I would want in the next generation of this camera, whereas this just feels like a small minor refresh with autofocus and whatever comes out next is really the upgrade. I feel sorry for anyone that already has a Lumix S5 because look, you really wanna drop another $2,000 or so just to get autofocus? It's kind of a pain in the ass, right? And if you already shoot Sony, I don't see this as a camera you would jump ship for. I think it's a great camera to have in your arsenal if you're looking for a B cam or a C cam or a social media camera because that open gate with the autofocus, I think all of that is wonderful if you do TikToks and Reels. I'm seriously considering just making this my YouTube camera now, just the camera that I leave on sticks or I use for TikToks and Reels and all that stuff for clients. Yes, it's the perfect like creator social media camera but I'm still looking for that perfect cinema camera. And I was really hoping something like this could be that, but I want this in like a box system. I want this to look like an FX3 or an FX30. I want a dedicated Lumix video camera that isn't trapped by its photo capabilities. And overall with cameras, I'm just sort of sick of hybrids. Give me dedicated video cameras. And I think that's the best thing that Sony has done in a while is doing the FX3 and the FX30, these little small sort of micro mirrorless cinema cameras are really, really stellar when you're out in the field and you're working. So don't get me wrong, I think this camera is absolutely stellar. Like I said, if you need a social media camera, you need an extra camera in your kit, or it's your first camera, or you're upgrading from like a GH5, or a G7, or a G85, any of the older Lumix cameras, here you go. This is the one to get. It's such an affordable camera with every bell and whistle you could possibly think of or need or want. And now we have very good autofocus. So. 
it's kind of the complete package for a lot of people. But I will leave you with a final thought. A camera like this makes every other camera manufacturer jump back on their heels a little bit because they're all gonna see this and go, oh shit. We were kind of riding on the coattails of our own little autofocus here. And, you know, it didn't really matter that our camera didn't have shutter angle and all this stuff. And it doesn't have anamorphic cough Sony. Sony's going to look at a camera like this and go, wait a second, we got to step our game up because now they're on us with that autofocus. And look, as these cameras all battle out and these companies fight each other, the only one that wins is us. So every camera is just going to keep getting better and better the more competition there is. So I'm so glad that Lumix is putting a punch in Sony's face with this camera because I think a lot of people are really gonna love this camera and get a lot of great images and use out of it. And all it will do is make Sony, Canon, Nikon, all the other guys go, hey, we gotta really step our game up because Lumix is poised to take the lead if they continue down this path of making stellar cameras that just work. They just work. They're workhorse cameras, they always have been and they will continue to be as long as we keep buying them. So that's my take on the S5 Mark II. I might do a video just comparing it directly with the FX30. So if that's something you're interested in, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, my name is Patrick Tommaso. I hope you liked this video and you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers.